Because your average internal combustion engine vehicle delivers the majority of its engine power over a very narrow range of engine speeds, you need a gearbox of some sort to ensure that power can be delivered over a wide range of vehicle speeds. When the automobile was in its infancy, there were a few gears, usually two forward and one reverse. But over time, the number of gears and how those gears operate have changed. And in the past 100 years, we've seen a whole range of different options for how vehicles should change gear, from floor-mounted gear levers and pedals, through to steering wheel shifters, sequential gearboxes, pre-selectable gearboxes, a dizzying array of shifting patterns, and of course, the option of fully or semi-automatic gearboxes. But electric vehicles, thanks to the way motors can provide efficient power over a much wider range of motor speeds, don't need traditional gearboxes unless they're being used for some really specific application where gears might help with low or super high speed operation. Most modern electric vehicles, in fact, have a fixed gear ratio, meaning they have no clutch or gear shifter. They use a single speed reduction gearbox, serving the purpose of gearing the output of the motor to an appropriate speed for the wheels. So why then is Toyota, a company known for its mistrust of electric vehicles, working on an electric vehicle with a pseudo gear shifter and pseudo clutch? Is it, as some of you have suggested in the comments section to our weekend roundup show, to try and make the experience of driving an electric vehicle less awesome? Or are there valid reasons that might be less to do with future models and more to do with future drivers? Stick around <laughs> and I'll tell you more. But first, this is the bit where I ask you to hit the subscribe button and ding that bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. Oh, and stick around until the end of the show when I'll tell you how you can support the channel. While the idea of a vehicle that doesn't need gears getting fake gears might sound silly at first glance, there are several potential reasons as to why Toyota is working on a pseudo gearbox and pseudo clutch for use in an electric vehicle. The first, of course, is a potential marketing ploy. People tend to be pretty stuck in their ways when it comes to what they want their vehicle to look, drive and feel like. It's something demonstrated rather well here at this channel. Myself, Kate and Winter are the three presenters on the channel who are all long-time EV drivers. We love using regenerative braking on accelerator liftoff to slow down our cars, often to stopping. Michael and Erin, meanwhile, while also plug-in vehicle owners, albeit with fewer years of ownership under their belts, hate using regenerative braking on accelerator liftoff and instead prefer to use the brake pedal to slow their cars down. And there's a reason for that which I think could explain why Toyota might also be trying to please hardened fans of the old-fashioned stick shift. You see, myself, Kate and Winter all spent significant time driving internal combustion engine classic cars before transitioning to EVs. And in those older cars, using one's engine to slow down the vehicle, changing down through the gears, is an essential part of the driving experience. In fact, relying on old drum brakes and non-vacuum assisted brakes is a surefire way to give your classic car brake fade and reduced braking performance. So utilizing the gearbox and engine braking is a much safer and more common way of retardation. These days, driving instructors in countries where stick shifts are still popular actively discourage drivers from changing down through the gears instead getting students to rely on modern vacuum-assisted disc brakes. In short, if you learned to use a vehicle in a particular way and you've got used to the feel of driving in a particular way, there may be some benefit to automakers trying to essentially appeal to you being stuck in your ways. And there's some hint in the pattern filing from Toyota which does suggest that's the case, talking about the pseudo shifter and pseudo clutch to mimic the changes in power delivery that occurs in a manual ICE vehicle. From an engineering perspective as a longtime EV driver, I don't see all that much benefit in the system. Yet Toyota's slightly confusing patent does seem to talk about torque delivery which looks like it might be willing to apply fake torque bands to the electric drivetrain to make it drive more like a manual internal combustion engine vehicle. And frankly, if that gets people to transition to an EV, I can live with that. In higher gears, if there's some faux torque limiting and power banding being created, 
it might also give a more recognisable throttle response for those used to driving stick. And if you're watching this, shouting at the screen and stating that this is completely pointless, I totally understand. But let's not forget that these days it is fairly common for vehicles with continuously variable transmission and internal combustion engines to have faux gear shifting. These vehicles don't actually need gear shifts because they use either a conical drive system or a planetary gearbox arrangement to continually vary the speed of the output shaft independently of the speed of the engine. But they feature those gear shifts, the faux ones, because people A, like to have the illusion of control, and B, a lot of people really like driving with gears. But aside from the we like it that way argument that many a gas car driver might put forth, there's also a more practical reason for a pseudo stick shift and gear system. And that's the many driving schools in much of the world. If you're watching this in North America, it's probably worth reminding you that while stick shift is pretty much dead in the US and Canada, though not perhaps so much in Mexico and other North American countries, most countries around the world, including Europe, still sell huge numbers of stick shift vehicles every single year. What's more, in countries like the UK, the type of vehicle you learn to drive in can influence what you are legally allowed to drive, full stop. You can learn to drive a manual vehicle and then drive an automatic or single gear car after passing your driving test, but you can't take your test in an automatic or single speed car and then legally drive a stick shift. In an ideal world, everyone that learns to drive and takes their driving test would be able to drive in an electric vehicle forevermore. But even in countries where there is a looming ban on the sale of new internal combustion engine vehicles, the majority of the used car fleet will be made up by internal combustion engine vehicles for years, even decades to come. And for most first-time car owners, especially teenagers, spending tens of thousands on a brand new EV just isn't possible. Meanwhile, driving schools, which are required to keep their vehicles current and in good condition, will hit that ban on ICE vehicles just like other fleet operators. Having an electric car that behaves like a manual might be a good stopgap to giving students the freedom post-test to drive whatever they want or can afford. And I should note that while I'm highlighting the UK, because that's where I'm from, it's not just the UK that treats driving tests in this way. I should also note here that even in the US, where manual transmission cars are a rarity and everyone does take their tests in an automatic vehicle, I mean, I did when I emigrated here, driving schools are still struggling to deal with the transition to electric vehicles. We regularly hear horror stories about students failing to pass their tests in an EV, not because of something they did poorly, but because the car they took their test in often their parents' electric vehicle, allowed them to bring their car to a stop on just accelerator liftoff, something that many testers in many states view as inappropriate vehicle control because you're slowing the car without using the brake pedal. Manual licenses are also considered preferable in countries that operate in a similar way to the UK when it comes to who is allowed to drive what. Many jobs still expect you to have a manual license so that you can drive delivery vehicles or farm machinery. And again, in countries where stick shifts are common, these vehicles tend to have a stick shift. In an ideal world, where electric vehicles are affordable for everyone and internal combustion engine vehicles no longer get sold on the used car market, we'd not need a faux gear shifter or a clutch. And many people in many markets won't anymore. But for once, I can see the idea behind this. And while I wouldn't necessarily want one for myself, there's at least some logic here I just can't argue with. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave the thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and don't forget to give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told 
when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month supporters, Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Jason Bordor, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Greta Trahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerbeck, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennersley, and Ian. If you're feeling left out, you can join Patreon at the link below, click the join button on YouTube to become a channel member, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.